Titus chapter 1. And uh, just continuing our study through the book of Titus. If you recall, um, Paul leaves Titus in Crete, a um, little island off the coast of Greece, and it was not a, an easy area. It was a difficult part of town, so to speak. And he leaves them there, and basically he's, he's got a tall order. He's got to straighten the church out. There's some false teaching going through the church. There's a lot of lazy men in the church. Um, a lot of things that Titus has to deal with. And Paul leaves them there and he goes, For this cause I left you in Crete. I left you there. And he goes over what he needs him to do. The things he needs to set in order, so to speak. The things he needs to correct. Now last week we talked about, he said, First and foremost, Titus, he goes, Find some godly men. Find some men who meet these qualifications, which we'll go through. Find some godly men and, and set them apart. Set them apart for ministry. Because Titus, you cannot do this alone. If God's going to grow you, if God's going to do anything, if, if, if God's going to grow a, you know, a bigger church, a, a better church to impact the community, he says, Titus, get some other men to help you. Get some other godly ladies to help you. Surround yourself with these kind of people. And he starts to list their qualifications. So one of the first tasks Titus was to do as he was setting things in order was to ordain leadership, ordain elders. And that's where we left off, their qualifications. Verse 6. If any is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of right or unruly, some say dissipation. And many think it's talking about older children who are start to go a little bit astray and many people think it's talking about there they're starting to get to the age you know 16 17 18 they start to experiment in the world and he goes try to find men who shepherd their families and their kids away from that blameless he says in verse 7 again for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of god not self-willed not soon angry not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. So these are the things that a leader... Now, he uses the word bishop, elder. It's interchangeable, okay? Elder is the, the seasonedness of the man. It should be somebody that has been around the body of Christ a while. Somebody that, that is not new. They're looked at as somebody that's a little bit more mature because they're a little bit older. They've been around a little while. Not someone 20 years old, 18 years old. They need to understand life a little bit. And then he uses the word bishop. Okay, that's the office, an overseer. That's what we're supposed to be doing, overseeing God's people, overseeing God's ministries. And he says, first of all, blameless. Now, what does blameless mean? What does blameless mean? Blameless means, doesn't mean that they're never going to make a mistake, they're never going to sin, they're never going to mess up. What it means is when a leader's trying to live for God, all right, trying to do a work for God, people are going to sling mud. People are going to say things from in the church and outside the church. And basically what he's saying, make sure the mud can't stick. Make sure it can't stay there. People are going to sling mud. It's just going to happen. It happens to us all the time. Out of the three pastors, it happens to Pastor Jonah more than any of us. It's what I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. But people sling mud. People sling mud. We're accused of every little thing under the sun. We've been accused of people in the church. What we're doing up the road's illegal. We don't have any permits. Okay, well, just drive by there. The permits are on the windows. Okay, that's, that, that, that's easily squelched. Okay? Every little thing you get accused of. They're out for this or that. We had a person recently accused us that we're, all we care about is money. And I know what I say to them? I said, Man, you should go to some other churches in the area and then come back and see if you think that that's the case here. Absolutely not. But it's just going to happen. There's no avoiding it. And Paul is encouraging Titus, Titus, you're one of these men, and that's why I'm leaving you there in Crete. And it's not an easy area. It's a difficult place to do some ministry. And he goes, find some men, Titus, that are like you, and get some help. <coughs> get some help. That's what he's telling them. He goes, so what? Blameless, the steward of God, not self-willed. It's not about them. It's for the glory of Jesus. Not soon angry. Not given to wine. Somebody that's not a drinker. 
No striker. Someone that's you know not always getting into fights with people outside the church. Because if, you, if you've been around for any time, God's people can get pretty upset sometimes. Pretty upset. And when you teach them and you correct them and you show them and you say, this is what the Word of God says, they have a tendency to get mad at you. But they're not, you know, but their argument is really with God, not with you. Not given to filthy lucre. They're not in it to try to get rich. They're not trying to, they're not giving over to money. That's not the motive behind what they're doing. That's what they're not supposed to be. Now this is what they're supposed to be. A lover of hospitality. In that day and age, it was somebody that would be willing to help out with strangers. People need some help sometimes. People need a sandwich. People need a ride. Whatever it is. It's somebody that has that kind of a heart and that kind of a spirit should be in the pulpits of God. Look what he says. A lover of good men... Sober, which means serious, serious about the work of God, just someone that's fair and listens, holy, temperate, it means that they have some self-control, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Now he says, someone that stands on the word of God and does not waver. Is not like a reed tossed in the wind, back and forth and back and forth. Someone that's going to hold and stand on the word of God, stand on truth, stand on doctrine, so they're able to exhort people and to convince the gainsayers, those who are going to come up against, because it's going to happen. Now, what he's going to move into next here, Titus, first of all, get some help. If there's any there that are like you, Titus, call them apart with you. That's your first task. First thing I want you to do is look through the church that is left in Crete, help them out, get some help so people can come alongside you and do this ministry with you. That's number one. Then he says number two, confront false teachers, Titus. Don't let false teaching go on. That's what he's going to say next here. For there are many unruly, which is rebellious, Vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. He says, there's a lot of vain talkers, there's a lot of deceivers, there's a lot of people who talk. There's a lot of people that are up behind the pulpits that are leading people that are just talkers, but they're not livers. And he's going to say that in a minute. They don't do the word of God. They don't live the word of God. But they can certainly talk the word of God. That's what he's saying. He goes, there's many of these vain talkers. He goes, but they're deceivers. They're phonies. They are fakes, Titus says. And he goes, let me explain to you how you can pinpoint them. How you can know who they are. What you need to look for. And he's going to describe it for us. Now listen, he says some of them are of the circumcision. What's the, what's the circumcision? The circumcision, they were the Judaizers in the church. They were those who got involved in the churches who said, yeah, well, you, you, you got to believe in Jesus, but you, you really have to be circumcised to be saved. You have to fulfill these certain dietary laws. These are things you have to do and, and if you're really going to have a relationship with God. And they were wrong. They were off. He goes, that's some of the group. Now, there were many others in the group because there were many vain talkers and deceivers. Now, listen, as we go through this, you'll be able to pinpoint them in our day and age. Now, listen, I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to tell you the truth, okay? Because I, I talked the other night, Wednesday night, about, you know, a sign that we're in the last days is a sign that there's false teachers abroad, everywhere, all over the place. And look what he tells them needs to be done. So Titus, what are you going to do about these deceivers, these vain talkers, these false teachers? Their mouths, verse 11, whose mouths must be stopped. Whose mouths must be stopped. He's going to say, tell them to shut up. Now listen, we live in a day and age that says, well, if anybody says they're a Christian, we need to love everybody and treat them the same. 
They're doing the work of God too. And I'm going to tell you something. If it doesn't line up with the scriptures, then they're not doing the work of God. If it doesn't line up with God's word, then they're not doing the work of God. I, I, I don't care what anybody says. Well, they're just trying to get the people in. They're just trying to show the love of Christ. And, and, and that's why they, they, they ordain homosexual ministers and lesbian ministers. They're just trying to gather people in. That's why they're just trying to show the love side of Christ. You know what the Bible says? Love rejoices in the truth. It doesn't rejoice in error. So you're really loving them if you tell them the truth, the Bible says. Right? Jesus' message wasn't well received by many people. Now listen, does it mean those who live that lifestyle, that they're out, you know, they, they can't be saved? No, of course not. We're all sinners. We need to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But that never means we let down the standards of God. See, because this is what the false teachers want to tell you. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to be happy. So if that's by your, you know, your relationships and your sexual, per, you know, persuasions. God just wants you to be happy anyway. And Jesus loves you regardless. God wants you to be happy. And after doing your finances and your things and you need more of that, God wants you to be happy. But you know what? When you read your Bible, it doesn't say anywhere that God wants you to be happy. It says God wants you to be holy. Because <coughs> holiness is happiness. According to God. That's what it says. Titus, I'm leaving you in Crete. First of all, get some help. Find some godly men and women to come alongside you. That's first and foremost. Second of all, there's so many false teachers there in Crete. Number one, he goes, because it's not an easy place to be. And he's going to talk about that. And he goes, Titus, you need to rebuke them. You need to correct them. It says whose mouths must be stopped. Now, how do we stop their mouths? How do we stop their mouths? How do we stop the mouths of false teachers? You know, I'm going to tell you, from my perspective, I think it's my duty as a pastor, as a minister of the gospel, that if, if I love the Lord and if I love his people, that I'm going to tell you the truth. And sometimes I'm not even afraid to name names. I'm not. They think, oh, that's terrible, that's mean, God will judge, that's not your job. That's not what Paul did. If you read the epistles, he's rebuking people all over the place. Remember Demas? Demas followed him for a while. And he says, let me tell you something about Demas. Demas forsook me. You know why? Because he loved this world. He didn't love the Lord enough. He put his name right out there. He delivers a couple men whom he names, Alexander and Hymenaeus. He goes, I deliver them. I push them out. I put them out of the church. And he names their names so they learn not to blaspheme because they're wrong. He names their names. He says, you stop their mouths. Don't be afraid to speak the truth and stick to the word of God. You know what? Here's one way you do it. You take away their opportunity. Take away their opportunity. Why does so? That means if you have brothers and sisters in Christ who will flock into these false teachers, hey, hey, so and so is coming to town. Hey, hey, so and so is coming to town. Hey, hey, so and so is coming to town. You should be, sit there and say, who cares if they're coming to town? They're, they're off. They're leading people astray. They're, they're teaching wrong teaching, wrong doctrine. Oh, but look at the healings and look at this and look at that. If it doesn't line up with God's word, it doesn't line up. So and so is coming to town. And this is, what, this is what I say. You know, so isn't Santa Claus, but he's not real either. <laughs> Seriously. He's a fake too. And, and that's what he tells Titus. Titus, take away their opportunity. Get them out of the platforms. Be so filled up with the truth, Titus. So people recognize the, the difference, difference between truth and error, Titus. Look what he says. Who subvert, listen, they subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for money, for filthy lucre's sake. 
They're leading whole houses astray. How does that happen? Very simple. Very simple. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. People get involved in the church. They get saved. They come to Christ. And if you haven't realized this yet, when you start walking with the Lord, and again, in 2 Timothy, it says, it says the time will come when they won't endure sound doctrine. It's painful sometimes to keep living for Jesus when it gets difficult. And he says, Timothy, they need to endure that. They need to endure the sound doctrine and stick to the teaching, even though it's difficult. But what happens is the false teachers come in and they say, oh, this isn't of God. Your life shouldn't be this hard right now. Surely there's an easier way. That's how they do it. I do that in the ministry sometimes. I do. I go to God. I'm like, God, why is it this hard? Oh, it's so difficult sometimes. Am I doing something wrong, Lord? Please help me. Please help. You know what the Holy Spirit always, always tells me? Stop whining and keep doing what you're doing. That's what he tells me. He goes, Let the, leave the results up to me. He goes, that's not your job anyway. Just stop whining and just keep doing what you're doing. That's always what God says. You know what? And that lines up with God's word. You know why? Because it says we're supposed to be faithful. Faithful. In season and out of season. Look what he says. They subvert whole houses. So how does that happen? How does that happen? They swoop in, vain talkers, deceivers, and they mix the truth and error together. They mix the truth and error together. Because listen, it's... People are savvy enough to say, hey, you know what? There's a false teacher on the scene. He's teaching us that Jesus didn't die on the cross for our sins, that Jesus was just a good guy. And listen, that's easy. You can figure that out. But when you mix the truth and error, right, and people are trying to endure in their faith, trying to walk with the Lord in the hard times and the difficulties, trying to stay faithful to the word of God, and then you come in and you say, well, it doesn't have to be that difficult because let me, just, let me share a few scriptures with you over here. Abraham was rich, you know. Well, Pastor Matthew, you go talking about money again. <laughs> I always talk about it that God sometimes wants, wants you to have less so you can live more for him. Because that's what they do. Don't you know Solomon was the richest man on the planet? God wants you to be that way too. And they, the way they do it is they mix the truth with error. And they bring both together and of course, the sin inside of us, right? We heap to ourselves itching ears, the Bible says. And we say, you know what? Yeah, this, this whole enduring thing and walking with the Lord thing and, you know, God working. This, this is, maybe that is the truth. And then you start to slide little by little. Well, God wants me to be happy. So, you know what? They don't uphold the standards of, you know what? Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You know, don't you marry someone who's a Christian, they dumb it down. You know what? God doesn't really want to get involved that deeply in your relationships in your life. That's what they say. And you know what? I know some people who God used, they, they got saved that way. Dating evangelism. Yeah, they did. That's because of God's grace. But you don't want to teach that to people. You don't want to line people up to be hurt. But they dumb down God's word. It's all over the place. Look what he says. And they do it for filthy lucre's sake. Filthy lucre's sake. Listen, turn with me if you will. I'm going to show you some mocks of false teachers. Jeremiah, back in the Old Testament, chapter 23. Same thing was going on. Nothing new. <coughs> Jeremiah, chapter 23. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet, by the way. And as he, would, as he would prophesy and teach God's people, you know what? There were so many false teachers out there. Jeremiah's word couldn't get through because everybody was running after the false teachers. Look what he says. Jeremiah chapter 23. If you found Isaiah, it's after that. God says this. Through Jeremiah. Woe be unto the pastors. You know what woe means? 
Woe is not a good thing. <laughs> Woe means you're, you're undone. You're doing something wrong. You're under God's judging hand. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. What were they doing? What's a pastor's job? They're to teach them. You're to, you're to stand in the place of God and teach God's word for God. That's a scary place to be. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, you scattered my flock. You've driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says the Lord. God says he's not going <laughs> to let it go. That's scary to me. That's scary. You say, well, where did they scatter? Did they just go away? No, 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 no. They went to the false teachings. Look in verse 9. Why are they scattered? First of all, because of their wickedness. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. This is Jeremiah talking. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine has overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of the swearing, because of swearing, the land mourneth. They're swearing in the name of God. These false prophets. I swear this and I swear that. And thus saith the Lord this. And thus saith the Lord that. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. And their course is evil. And their force is not right. You know what he's saying? He goes, the land is condemned Israel because of the false teachers. And because everybody's flocking to the false teachers. Take that to 2015. <laughs> What's going on in America? The Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, where shall the righteous stand? Well, you know what God says? If the pastors, if the shepherds would stand up in front of all of God's people and teach the truth of God's word, you know what? God might preserve this land a little bit longer. That's what he says. That's what he says. And I, I love the Christians that say, oh, this one's an office, and that one, and this one, and that one. Well, who'd you vote for? And then you listen, and they voted for their pocketbook. They didn't vote because of God's holy standards, and God's holiness, and God's righteousness. Right? Well, some of you might be right here in this room. I don't know. I don't know. Look what he says. He condemns them because of their wickedness. For both prophet and priests are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, says the Lord. They're in my house. They're speaking in my name. Pastor Matt, don't tell me that. They're just trying to do God's work too. Well, if they're not going to teach the word of God, and they're not going to stand on the standards of God's holiness and righteousness, they're false. They're false. Who are you to say? I'm not saying God's saying God's saying that. All you have to do is just turn on the TV, listen to the radio. Man, man, you're on the radio. Well, I, I hope I'm sticking to the word of God. <laughs> and this is what I say. This is what I say, too. You know what? I'm, I'm glad that we're on there. I'm glad there's some really good teachers on there because it's, at least it's combating so much falsehood. So many phonies. Really. Jeremiah says, my heart is broken because of this. He goes, I'm, I'm going through life staggering at what's going on with God's land in Israel and the judgment of God on this land because of the fake and false teachers and all the people that are flocking to them. He says, I'm broken hearted over that. And you know what bothers me? This is what bothers me. When people come up and they say, Hey, what do you think of this guy? What do you think of this lady? And I said, well, I don't think too much of him, to be honest with you. I said, what do you mean? You see all the people they're helping? Because that's usually what you get. And I said, well, they're really not helping anybody because they're robbing people of an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, the people are getting saved, you know. And I say, well, 
Maybe some are, maybe some aren't. I don't, I don't know their hearts. Maybe even the leaders are saved, you know. I don't know that. But all I know is they're robbing people of an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. When they don't teach the counsel of God. The whole counsel of God. And they dumb down the word of God. Jeremiah condemns the false teachers because of their own wickedness. Look what he says. Look in verse 16. Jeremiah 23, he condemns them because of the hypocrisy. Thus says the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets. Jeremiah is saying to the people, in the name of God, don't listen to the words of these prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say, listen, they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, you shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walks after the imagination in his own heart, no evil's going to come upon you. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, who hath perceived and heard his word, who hath mocked his word and heard it? Then you read the next few verses, he goes, the anger of the Lord is kindled against him. You know what he's saying? These prophets will stand up there and they'll say, God just wants you to be happy. It's just peace that's going to be upon you and your home and prosperity. That's what Jeremiah says false prophets say. God wants you to be happy. It doesn't matter if you go. You can kind of do whatever you want because Jesus is your Savior. Live however you want. God says these, these prophets aren't speaking in my name. They're speaking out of the imagination of their own minds and own hearts. Because what do people want more than anything else? Just give me peace, leave me alone, and give me everything I can have under the sun so I can just do what I want to do when I want to do it. Look at verse 20, 21. I have not sent these prophets, God says, yet they ran. I didn't speak to them. But they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. He goes, you want to know someone that's a true teacher? They're going to stand up there and they're going to say, God is holy and you're not and you need to be more like him. And that's why you need the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And the man, that's condemning. What about Ephesians 1? You know, we're set apart with God in heavenly places and God sees us as perfect and all this. Yeah, I, I get all that. In Jesus Christ, we're perfect, positionally. But you know what? Practically, that's what the whole, all the epistles are written about. Practically, we're still sinners. If you haven't realized that. And we should be longing to sin less and love God more. I gotta get through this or we'll never have communion. So <laughs> look in verse 23. He condemns them, Jeremiah, because of their presumption. They just they just speak in the name of God with them. No thought, no worry. Look what God says. Am I a God at hand? Says the Lord. And, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I don't see him, says the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets said, that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. That's what they say. They were coming out with these prophets and saying, I had a dream, dream, I had a dream, and I have a dream, and a dream, and a vision, and a dream, and a vision. Do you know, the, the, there's people that come through the churches all the time. Well, he... You know, there's not enough dreams and visions in your church. And it says that in Acts 2, so the Holy Spirit's not that. Well, wait a minute. It says your young men will dream dreams. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will have visions. Absolutely, we believe that. But if it doesn't line up with God's word, then it's not of God. It's not of God. And the test of time will tell. Look what he says. Am I a God at hand? Meaning, am I a God that you can control with your hands? Like your false gods? Look what he says. Look in verse 28. 
The prophet that has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Listen to what he says. This is what false prophets do. What is the chaff to the wheat, says the Lord? He goes, false prophets will bring the garbage in with the truth and mix it together. The chaff and the wheat. Because what naturally happens in the heart of people? I'm going to gravitate more to the chaff because it makes my life easier. But look what God says. Is not my word, verse 20 time, like as fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophet, says the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. He goes, isn't my word like fire and like a hammer? You know what that means? God's word should send fire and conviction, and it should break the sin in our life so we can be more like Jesus Christ. Lastly, verse 33 to the end. We won't dig into it too much. He goes, he condemns them for their blasphemy. <laughs> they were mocking the truth. They were mocking the truth. Go back to Titus. So Titus, what are you going to do with these false teachers? Paul tells them their mouth's got to be stopped. They subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables, commandments of men that turn from the truth, Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. What's Titus talking about here? What, what is Paul talking about to Titus? Evil beasts, slow bellies, the Christians are lies. Paul says, listen, Titus. He goes, I don't have to tell you the kind of people that you're dealing with there in Crete. Their own people say that they're a bunch of liars. And he goes, what has happened in the church is the church just kind of let them creep in without any standards of holiness, without lining up with the um, qualifications of an elder, and they started to gather some people to themselves. And, and, and Paul says, let me remind you, Titus, you know the kind of people that you're dealing with, their own people. He's quoting one of their own people. His name is... Epimenides, and even in his own writings, he says, my people, the Cretans, are they're just liars. He goes, Paul says, I don't, I don't have to call them that. Their own people call them that. So Titus, whatever you do, you need to get them out of these positions in the church because they're leading people astray. And then look what he says in verse 16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. You know what he's saying? He's saying, Titus, let me show you, let me tell you how you can discern, excuse me, if someone is a real believer and a real teacher of God. He goes, they'll profess and they'll talk like they know God. But in the way they live, you really know. That's what it says. In the way that they live, you'll really know. And the things that they care about, the things they spend their time on, their money on, that's how you'll really know them. Titus, didn't Jesus say this? You'll know them by their fruit. Because people can talk, people can say, people can quote Bible, people can have a lot of intelligence when it comes to the Word of God. But do they really love Jesus? Do they really have Jesus? You know what? Paul tells Titus, tell them to show you. Tell them to show you. Now listen, I'm not talking about the believer who's trying to live for Jesus, who falls and gets back up. Trying to live for Jesus, who falls and gets back up. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the so-called believer who justifies everything. 
well, there's a reason for that, and God must have a plan for that, and that's why I'm doing that. And I'm not ready to get rid of that out of my life right now, because, you know, me and God have a deal. God's okay with that. Really? But in works, you deny him. See, isn't this what James said? James said, show me your faith by your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Show me that you love Jesus, and by the way that you live, James wasn't afraid to say, because I'll show you that I love Jesus by the way I live. That's what he said. There's a lot of talkers, but there's not a lot of walkers. That's what he says. And that's why when he says, look at chapter 2 says, but you, Titus, speak the things which become sound doctrine. Now it's interesting, and we'll close with this. He says, Titus, I want you to speak the things in the church that become sound doctrine. Now, what is doctrine? Doctrine is right teaching about Christ. Death, burial, resurrection of Christ. But it's interesting, he doesn't get into in chapter 2, the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, second coming. Those are doctrinal teachings. He doesn't get into ex eschatology, which is future things. He doesn't get into soteriology, which is the doctrine of salvation. He says, Titus, speak the things that become sound doctrine. You know what he's going to say? This is what he's going to say. He's going to say, how do the aged men, the men that are a little older, how do they act in the church and with their families? And then he's going to say, how about the women that have known Christ for a while? How do they act with their husbands? And what do they teach the ladies in the church? And then he says, Titus, how do the young women act in the church? And what are the older ladies teaching the younger ladies? And then he says, Titus, what about the young men? How are they living their lives? Because if you love Jesus, there's going to be a change in your life. If you love Jesus, there's going to be some things that you're going to want to do for Jesus. And it starts in your personal relationship with God, and then it overflows to your family, then it overflows to your church, and then it overflows to out there. Titus had a difficult task. We all have a difficult task trying to live for Jesus in a lost and dying world. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do it.